Okay, so this is in Photoshop. It's not really clean at this point. Um, what I would normally do is uh, take this into Illustrator, vectorize it, clean it up in the vector, and then if I needed a JPEG, I would uh, export it back into Photoshop and do what I needed to do with it. Basically, this is right now black figure on a white ground, and if you're wondering what it is, it's a garlic. The figure and the ground are clearly separated. Black figure, white ground. There is no reversal at this point. There is no ambiguity. What I'm going to do is, uh, I've got this basically on two layers so we can see uh, now there's the background grid in Photoshop. Uh, over here, uh, I've got a white layer underneath it. So I am going to merge down, which you can do from here. It's actually, um, down here it's outside of the video screen or you can do a, a command E and that will merge it. So now it's all on one layer and what I want to do is take half of it and reverse it and because it's in Photoshop uh, I'm just going to have to do a uh, straight up vertical axis. So the dividing line now is going to be right here. Okay, so this is the axis along which the figure and ground are going to reverse on either side. So the best way to do that, let me see if I can invert it directly. If I go to Adjustment, and I want to go to Invert. There you go. So now there's a figure ground reversal, and it does need cleaning up. So you can see it's black against white, and now it's white against black. So that's the initial image digitally. That's the initial six inch square motif. And then what you do the rest of the way, if you're going to carry everything through, you'll take in a probably a second JPEG or PNG file, you'll do another six by six square and then just grab all of this and copy it into the new square, into the new file and uh, reduce it 50% like this and then just copy it. And of course clean it up so you don't have gutters and things like that in between. So you'll start to see new shapes forming where there weren't any before when you reduce and repeat. All right, I'm now in Illustrator, and first thing I'm going to do is uh, vectorize this so I can clean it up, because otherwise we're going to get all the wobbly lines from the marker bleeding on the paper, and that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to find layers. Where are my layers? Way up over here. And uh, I'm going to make a new layer. So for now I'm going to make that invisible and I'm going to activate this with the selection tool and then I'm going to go object we're going to do image trace under object and we're going to make and expand so now what I have is a trace of the original piece and then the next thing I'm going to do is ungroup. And you'll see how it's now kind of all broken apart. I mean, I can move these things anywhere, but this is I've got all these different shapes. And that's actually what I want. So to start cleaning this up, I'm first going to go under Object, Path, and then Simplify. And by adjusting the sliders, oh, I have to show preview. So now, see the outlines? So watch as I adjust the curve precision slider. If I go this way, it starts wanking up. That's not what I want. I want greater precision, but I want things smoothing out. And I'll just leave angle threshold where it is. And you can see now it's a lot smoother than it was. And I'm going to 
to cut that and go to the second layer. And paste it. I'm going to do the same thing again. So again, it's path, simplify. And you can see how the path is now, the, the blue line is indicating a uh, smoothness that wasn't there previously. And so you can see the smoothness here. So now I'm going to cut that, go back up here and paste it. So there's a few places that do need cleaning up still, but uh, it's a lot smoother than it was. Still has kind of a hand-drawn feel to it. And you can see all of the uh, original outlines. Okay, so now I'm going to copy this layer. And what I want to do is actually make sort of an S-curve axis. So the way I'm going to do that is take out the fill. Let me just do this so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so that's my box. And I'm just going to add a few points. So I can get this curved properly. Actually, I probably only need to do one point. Let's see here. And I'm going to do that and draw away. Should need to let me get my ruler out here. I'll bring it into two inches from the edge from the right side, and I want to put this one two inches from the edge on the left side. Okay, so the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. So that's what I'm going for. And I'm going to adjust that curve so it makes sense. And I'm just watching how this is interacting with this. So that's going to be my axis. Go ahead and give that a, I'll just give it a green fill, I'll take that away, and give that a green fill. So there I have that lovely green thing. So I'm selecting both the green shape and the black shape underneath. So I'm grabbing that shape and then also the green. And I'm going to the Pathfinder tool. So there's the Pathfinder palette. So these are where all your shape relationships reside. So what I'm going to do is click this. Then I'm going to come over here and ungroup. So I can pull the shapes out separately. So I'm going to make, fill that with black. I'm going to fill that with white. I'm going to fill those with black. See how the reversal is working? That's going to be white. I'm 
that will be white. Zoom in here. There we go. There we go. So now we have the figure ground reversal. So now I'm going to pull everything and I'm going to group it. So this is panel one. So you would print this out. Okay, that's now divided into four equal quadrants. I'm going to copy, paste. Okay, that's your second panel. And then you make two more art bards. The second one, or the third one, is going to take this entire set as one unit. So you will select it all and then group it again into one, and then you will reduce to 50%. And then you will make a copy, reduce it to 50%, and repeat it three more times. And then you take that grouping, reduce to 50%, and repeat it three more times.